Let's solve a couple of geometric distribution problems. We'll also calculate the expected value and the standard deviation of the geometric random variable at play here. This is the question. Assume that 13% of people are left-handed. If we select five people at random, find the probability of each of these two outcomes. The first lefty is the fifth person chosen, and the probability that the first lefty is the second or third person. For these geometric distribution problems, the fact that we're selecting five people at random doesn't really have any bearing on our calculations. This box here gives us a quick recap of the essential facts for geometric models, and indeed a geometric model is appropriate here. We are randomly selecting people, each time we select someone, there's a 13% chance that person will be left-handed, and there's no reason to believe that the left-handedness or right-handedness of one person would affect the likelihood that the next person we randomly select is left-handed or not. Safe to assume that these trials are independent, and we are answering questions about how many people we will have to choose until we get a lefty. So for sure, a geometric model is appropriate. So let's define our random variable. We'll say that x is the number of people selected until a lefty is found. Remember that we count the success. When we finally get that lefty, that is part of our count. So if we select two people that aren't lefties, but then the third person is a lefty, then x would be equal to 3. So based on this situation, we could say that x is geometric. x is a random variable that is geometrically distributed with its one parameter p, its probability of success, being 13%. Let's calculate the probability that the first lefty is the fifth person chosen. Then we'll take a quick second to calculate the expected value and the standard deviation of x. So to calculate the probability that the first lefty is the fifth person chosen, that's the probability that our random variable x is equal to 5. And we can see here what the formula for that is. It's q to the power of 5 minus 1 and Q is just the probability of failure. There's a 13% chance we get a lefty, so that's a 13% chance of success. So the probability of failure is 1 minus that, or 0 0.87. So we need this probability of failure, and we need it to happen four times. We need to have four right-handed people so that that fifth person will be the first lefty. And then, of course, we need to multiply by the probability that we actually get that lefty on the fifth person. You can see how that agrees with the formula here. We have the probability of failure to the power of 5 minus 1, which is 4, multiplied by the probability of success. That's exactly what you see here for the PDF of the geometric model. Now, to calculate what this probability actually equals, we can just use our calculator. We could type in 0.87 to the power of 4 multiplied by 0.13 and get our probability of 0.07, or we could use the calculator calculator's built-in geometric distribution function, then we wouldn't have had to write this out to begin with. To do that, we press second and then vars to access our calculator's distribution functions. And we can scroll down to the geometric PDF, that's the geometric probability distribution function. We need to put in our p parameter, the probability of success, which is 0.13, and we want the probability that our geometric random variable equals 5. So then we put in 5, and you see we get the same thing. So this turns out to be about 0.74. Let's go ahead and calculate the expected value and the standard deviation of our geometric random variable. The expected value of a geometric random variable is the reciprocal of p, the reciprocal of the probability of success. So in this case, that's going to be 1 over or 1 divided by 0 0.13. And this is about 7.69. Now we can calculate the standard deviation of our geometric random variable. I'll denote that as sigma subscript 
x. To calculate the standard deviation of a geometric random variable, we need to take the square root of q, the probability of failure, divided by p squared, so the square of the probability of success. So we'll just get a big square root going here. In the numerator, we have q, the probability of failure, that's just 1 minus p, so again, that's 0.87. And then we divide by p squared, so divide by 0.13 squared. And this is about 7.17. Let's go ahead now and answer the next question, the probability that the first lefty is the second or third person. So now we're calculating a probability for what would be considered a union of events. I won't use the union notation, just in case you haven't seen it, but what we're calculating is the probability that x equals 2, the first lefty being the second person, or, which is like a union, so we're including the probability that the third person is the first lefty. And in fact, now that I've written it with or, I'm just going to switch it to union notation, which is what I prefer. It would look like that. The way we calculate the probability of a union of events depends on if the events are mutually exclusive or not. Is it possible that x could equal 2 and x could equal 3 at the same time? Well, that's not possible. Either the first lefty is the second person or the third person. It can't be both. So these events are mutually exclusive, which is good because that means all we need to do to calculate the probability of their union is add their individual probabilities. In general, we would also have to subtract the probability of the intersection of these events to avoid double counting the times where they both happen. But since there is no intersection of these events, we don't have to worry about that. So we're just just left with two more geometric calculations to do and then we can add them together. The probability that x equals 2 is just one failure, so 0.87 times that next success, so 0.13. And then we add the probability that x equals 3. That's just two failures, so 0.87 squared, but then we need the third trial to be a success, so we then multiply by the probability of success. And if we consult our calculator for these numbers, we find the probability is 0.21. So there we go, this probability is about 0.21, and that's how we answer some simple questions about geometric distribution and how we calculate their expected values and standard deviations. Hope it was helpful. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions.